I have been using my drone in beginner mode, auto mode, but I wanna move forward into being able to capture better footage, cinematic footage, amazing footage. And in order to do that, I'm gonna to have to move into the pro settings. These pro settings are actually easier than you think, so come along with me, I'm gonna show you a few key elements and how to go from auto to pro. Okay, so auto mode is a great way to use your drone when you're starting out because it allows you to focus on flying. The only thing is when it's automatically changing the settings, sometimes the lighting looks unnatural and our eyes just don't see the world that way. So if you can move into the pro settings, you're able to control and master the ISO, the shutter speed, and the aperture. If you stick around to the very end, we have a bonus tip about the exposure meter. Okay, I think it's important to mention that all three of these elements control light. Right now we're gonna be talking about aperture. We can think about aperture kind of like the pupil of our eye. When the pupil of our eye is getting bigger, it's allowing more light to come in. When the aperture is opening up, it's allowing more light to come in. What this does to your subject is it makes your subject really crisp and clear, and it makes the background behind your subject blur. This is called bokeh, so you can impress your friends with that word if you want. Aperture is measured in f-stops. This is not too important, but the lower the f-stop, the better the aperture. Some drones have fixed apertures and some have where you can change the aperture. The Mini 3 Pro that I have has a fixed aperture of 1.7, but this is a really good number and it allows for really good low light performance. Next, we're gonna talk about shutter speed. Shutter speed is the amount of time that the shutter allows for light to come in and fall on your camera sensor. If it comes in quickly and it's a fast shutter speed, it's in the blink of an eye, it will um, freeze your image and have a really sharp, clear, distinct image. If it has a slower shutter speed, it's allowing in for more light, you're gonna have a more cinematic, blurred motion look. So shutter speed is measured in a fraction of a second, 1 30th being a slow shutter speed and 1 6400th being a fast shutter speed, letting in less light. I cannot believe that's insane. 1 I was just imagining trying to close a window in like 1 hundredth of a second, like that'd be insane. So it's insanely fast. Next, we're gonna talk about ISO. Think of ISO as your drone's superpower for being able to see in the dark. Sometimes you're gonna wanna be able to get footage outside. Maybe the sun is setting and you need your camera to be more sensitive to light. This is where ISO comes in. You can think of it like a volume control. So when you're asking for more sensitivity to light, you're gonna be turning the volume up. Starting at 100, you're not gonna have much sensitivity. Going all the way up to 3200 or 6400, you'll have mega sensitivity. Balance is key here though, because as you bring up the sensitivity, asking your camera to look for more light, you're gonna end up getting something called noise. This is a graininess that's in your footage. So you always wanna have your lowest ISO as possible for the exposure that you're working with. So that is your exposure trio. Your aperture, your shutter speed, and your ISO. It's gonna be a balancing act between these three, getting what you're going for, but you're gonna be using depth of field, motion blur, and sensitivity to light. This is what makes your drone footage so fun and amazing. You'll get that artistic look you're going for, and it will just be so awesome to see it all come together. Now, let's see these principles in action. Let's say we're filming a sunset scene. The sun's going down, our image is getting darker. We could bump our ISO up a little without changing our shutter speed. If the noise from the increased ISO becomes too much, then we can slow down our shutter speed to increase the amount of light coming in. Here's a bonus tip for you. The exposure meter on your camera is a handy tool to help you achieve proper exposure. So use it to your advantage. If the pointer is to the right, it's too overexposed and it is too bright. Conversely, if the pointer is to the left, it's underexposed and is too dark. We can use our new tools to correctly adjust the exposure and get the look we're going for. If you like this video, please be sure to like and subscribe and don't miss out on our next video. We are going to be talking about frame rates, motion blur, ND filters, and why the 180 degree shutter speed rule is the secret recipe for truly cinematic drone footage. Kevin, you're a good boy. Yeah, it's okay. Come here. Good boy. Good boy.